Lord is in this place. Amen. I don't hear you. Amen. God is, in fact, amazing. Strengthen while you remain. It has become clear to us in this series that we are chosen. Isn't that right? It has also become absolutely clear to us that the key ingredient, Brother Johannes, is the Holy Spirit. But even though we are chosen, even though we have the Holy Spirit, we still face problems. One day in 2011, I responded to the call of nature. And while I am doing my business, a bluish snake from behind the toilet appeared. I turned off the call of nature and I ran faster than a cheetah. <laughs> I don't know if it is you, how you respond to that situation. Are you going to turn on flight mode? Or are you going to turn on fight mode and kill the snake? I believe that we handle problems in two ways. Either we fly or we fight. It's either we turn on flight mode or we turn on fight mode. And I wonder, how do you deal with problems in your life? And so turn with me to the word of God in 1 Samuel chapter 17 and verse number... 11, we're going to read verse number 11, verse 24, and then verses 45 to 47. Uh, You'd be happy to know that I, I like to read the word of God first before I get into it. And so, Sister Julia, you need to have the Bible. I don't see the Bible in your hands, so you got to get into it. Uh, please open your, your Bible, slide to it, and uh, when you have it, kindly stand as we read God's word together. 1 Samuel chapter 17 and verse number 11. That's our beginning point this afternoon. If you have it, please stand as we read God's word together. And let me hear you say amen. If you don't have the Bible, please look at your neighbor, my sister. You know, you can share with the neighbor. Please look at the word of God. It is not the preacher's word that has power. It is the word of God that has power. Can I hear you say amen? amen. All right. I like that. Can I read? Okay. Some people are still turning to their Bible. Sister May, do you have the Bible? Yeah. Okay. Good. Good. I see. I see. All right. Turn those Bible apps. You know, turn those Bible apps. When you have it, say amen. El Ray, you have it? Okay. First Samuel chapter 17, verse 11. Can I read? Verse 11 says, when Saul and all Israel heard these words of the Philistine, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. Verse 24. And all the men of Israel, when they saw the man, fled from him and were dreadfully afraid. Verse 45, then David said to the Philistine, you come to me with a sword, with a spear, and with a javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. This day the Lord will deliver you into my hand, and I'll strike you and take your head from you. And this day I will give the carcass of the camp of the Philistines to the birds of the air and the wild beasts of the earth that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. Then all the assembly shall know that the Lord does not save with sword and spear for the battle. Hear this church for the battle is the Lord's and he will give it into your into our hands. The sermon is entitled, Flight or Fight. Look at your neighbor and tell them, fight, flight. Look at your neighbor, flight. flight, or fight. Let's pray. Lord, as we listen to your word, speak to us. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. The Philistines have invaded 
Judah. Judah was located in the southern part of the country of Israel. This was a real problem because the Philistines were coming and they intended to make uh, this country called Israel a colony, just like what the Dutch did in colonizing Indonesia, Sister Varissa. And so they wanted this uh, country to be under uh, them. And so how it happened is that the Philistine army stood on one side and the Israelite army stood on the other side. And in between there was uh, the valley, the valley of L.A. Everybody say the valley of L.A. The Philistines on this particular uh, day, Sister Lovely, they brought a secret weapon. Our narrator does not uh, want us to miss the point in uh, verse number uh, four, verse number three and four, uh, especially verse number four. He, he says that a champion came out. This champion, Sister Julia, was not a champion of, uh, of the World Cup. He was not a champion of the Wimbledon. He was not a champion of a, a badminton game. He was a champion in winning wars. He was an expert in one-to-one -one com combat. When the Philistines wanted to save resources or they wanted to make the battle short, they called upon this champion. If this champion had a katepe, his noma or nama, noma nama, his nama would be a Goliath. His alamat, Philistia of Gath. His gender, a lalake. Lalaki. Lucky, lucky. But on his katepe uh, would be a special place uh, to describe his, his height. This man stood 2.7 meters tall. If he entered this room, he would have to bend. Uh, Suprawano, the tallest Indonesian man, only stands at 2.1 meters. Goliath was taller than he was. In fact, uh, Goliath had... The state of the art in terms of weapons, the best of the best in that day, Goliath had it. He was uh, armored from head to toe. In fact, his armor was uh, looked like fish scales, and there he was. And, and his, his weapons, they weighed 100 kilos. You see, our storyteller wants you to get the point. Goliath was a big brother. Goliath was a big man. And Goliath knew it. And so Goliath came out. And you know the deal. I'll read the white and you're going to read what is not white. Are we together? All right. Choose a for yourselves and let him come down to me. If he's able to fight with me and kill me, then we will be. I don't hear you, Edo Ray. But if I prevail against him and kill him, then uh, you shall be and serve. No, that, that's my part. Don't worry about that. I, I, the armies of Israel this day, give me a man that we may fight uh, together. You know, some good athletes, great athletes, when they show up, just because they showed up to the game, it will intimidate their opponents. Imagine if you had to swim against uh, Richard Berra. This is Indonesia's champion when it comes to the SEA Games. He won 23 gold medals. Imagine if you had to play against Bambang Pamunkas. This brother has scored 68 games. Just the fact that they show up you would be afraid. In fact, some of you would want to get their autograph. And so Goliath understood. He knew that the Israelites were babies in one-to-one -one combat. And so he was using intimidation. Send a man who can fight me. 
If he beats me, we're going to be your slaves. But if we beat you, because I know I'm going to beat you, you're going to be one of ours. And the Bible tells us, and we read this in verse number 11, the Bible says that the Israelites, the Israelites, I said the Israelites were greatly afraid. They were dismayed and like dogs with a tail between their legs, they were ready to run. When we look at our problems with sight, flight mode turns on. It's a routine checkup, but the doctor discovers that you have cancer. Fear creeps in, and you feel like you're going to die that day. You don't graduate on time. The graduation date passes. Fear of not completing the degree. Fear of not being somebody in life creeps in. The relationship ends. You're no longer with that person. Fear of loneliness and, and being unattractive creeps in. Am I talking to somebody? You realize when you go on the scale, you weigh yourself, you look at the kilos and it's more, not less. And so fear of an attractiveness and being ugly and all of these things, I'm overweight, people don't think I'm good anymore. You ask people close to you, do I look good still to you? Amen. When we look at our problems... We sight, fear creeps in and takes a driving wheel in our lives. And this is what is happening to the people of Israel. And you see, Saul and the army became paralyzed. They could not move. They were there for 40 days, I tell you. The, the Philistine a giant, the Philistine champion is hurling insults. Defy me. Fight me. Nobody's able to fight and the people are just there. But these are people who believe in God. Saul was a man who was anointed by God. The Israelites worshipped the God of the universe, but they were paralyzed. And that is what happens to you and me. We're paralyzed by our fears. We can't move. We can't go nowhere. The thing just swirls around us and we are not able to handle it. And you see what, why, why that happens? Why people who believe in Jesus become afraid? Because we think we can go at it alone. We toss aside, we kick aside God's promises. And we, we, we don't realize that people in the Bible, somebody like David, he also dealt with divorce. People like uh, Joseph dealt with unwanted friend requests. <laughs> These people in the Bible, the same experiences that you and me have, they went through them. Let me give you a secret. Times have changed, but the human condition is still the same. Fear then is fear today. And so the reason why we are afraid is we take our eyes off God and we look at the problem. And when we do that, flight, flight mode, I said flight mode turns on and we are ready to run. And I'm not talking about the feature on your phone. So David arrives. He's not afraid. He's been sent by his father to give some errands because in those days they didn't have MREs, mules ready to eat. The, the army did not provide food for the soldiers. And so it was the families of the soldiers responsible for giving food to Sarah. And so David is sent by his father because David was a young man. He was under the age of 20, so he couldn't fight in the army. Are you get what I'm saying? So we know from last week that he was a bodyguard of the king. You remember that? But because he was young, he was not the top bodyguard, and therefore he had to, he, on vacation, he would go and visit his father. So he's with his father, taking care of the sheep still. The father says, please go and check on your brothers. And so he goes and checks on his brothers. He gets there. He runs to meet his brother. He says, hey, what's going on? And lo and behold, he hears the decibels going higher and higher. And this is what he heard. I'm going to make us imagine, Sister Julia, because you were telling that we can't imagine. But I'm going to make us imagine. Because somehow today, because of YouTube and all these things, we don't know how to imagine. So can you imagine with me? Can I bring you to? Yeah, can we imagine? I imagine that the conversation went something like this. It has been 40 days and nobody's ready to fight me. And David is talking to his brothers and he says, what's, what's happening? Eliab, who is that? 
Goliath. Ah, uh, so what? And and this is what David David becomes angry because when he listens to what Goliath is saying, he realizes that it is doing something. And, and read the word of God. Remember, I read white, you read what is colored. What shall be done for the man who kills this Philistine and takes away the? From who? That, that's my part again. For who is this? David is saying, who is this person who doesn't believe in God? To defy the who? The armies of the living God. David could not believe that for 40 days, you don't hear me, Elder Ray. David could not believe for 40 days that Eliab, the king, and the army of Israel allowed a non believer to curse and shame the name of God. Ooh, you didn't get that. David could not believe that for 40 days he allowed a non-Christian to say things about Jesus. For 40 days, the brothers and the army, Sister Riani, they did not do anything about a man who was speaking against his God. Oh, sometimes my brother and my sister, we put God to shame. We know we shouldn't laugh at that joke. It is bad. It is putting somebody down. But because we don't want to be different, we laugh. We know we shouldn't accept the work assignment by the Herman, but we do anyway. We, we know that we should stand up for God, but we don't. So David says, uh-uh. What? I got to correct this situation. How can we allow a person who doesn't believe in God to talk down on God? No, I can't. As a good believer, as a conscientious believer, I cannot listen to a man put God's name down. I don't know about you, but David... Could not take it. So David, says Avarisa, volunteered himself to fight. He says, okay, I'm going to fight. Now you must understand, this is a young man who has no wife. He has no, he has no kid. He's a teenager. His brothers who are older than him have kids and grandkids and the king has kids. He is willing to fight this giant of a man. And so the news of David's uh, accepting the challenge. You know how we accept challenges today. You know on Facebook. You know the 10-day challenge. There was a challenge going on. Beat Goliath challenge. And so David agreed. He says I'm going to fight against Goliath and the news spread that David has accepted the challenge and so he was invited to go and talk to the king. So the king says, "Ah, uh, hey David. Woo! You know what? I, I know, man. You, you really want to deal with this problem. I understand. But uh, you know, Goliath, this brother has been fighting all his life. And the king also knew, hear this, the king also knew that if this fight actually took place, the future of the nation was in jeopardy. Because if they lost, they were going to be slaves. So can a king trust his nation to a boy? <laughs> the future of his nation, he couldn't do it. But David says, no, listen king. The thing is, you need to understand. So David presented his resume. Huh? I hope you guys have resumes. Huh? Things that you have done. Huh? That's what a resume is. Yeah, I've done this. I've been to this school. I've, I got into this society. And I've had this many hours at this. Yeah, that's a resume. So David says, King, I understand what you say. But listen to my resume, Brother Johannes. This is a resume. You know, I used to take care of the, my, my, my daddy's sheep. And once in a while, lions and bears would come. And in fact, they would take some of my father's sheep. And you know what I, I used to do, King? I used to run after these bears and lions. And I would grab the lion by his, his mane, his beard, and I would sling him. And I would kill the lions. And King, you need to understand something else. It's not that because I had power to kill the lions. No, it was God who did that for me. So David says, King... I'm actually more prepared for Goliath. In fact, Goliath is going to be like one of these dead lions and bears that I used to kill. I hope you caught that. 
This person who is putting the name of God down, I'm going to make him like a lion. He's, he's in fact, he's not a human being to me anymore. He's an animal because he has put the God name down. Oh, you didn't get that. So the king reluctantly, and I, I just want you to see this. Okay, David, you can go. God be with you. You know how we tell people, when, you know, God bless you. We don't want to join them. But, hey, God, God bless you. I, I, I'm praying for you. Amen. So that's what the king says. But the king didn't realize, and we know this because God was with David. David had the Holy Spirit. David was chosen by God. And so while the king thinks that he's praying for David, he's actually talking about the real experience of David. And so David decides to go and fight this, this champion of the Philistines. The king suggested, hey, you can use my, my, my armor. and this stuff. David says, no, nah, no, nah, I, I don't operate that way. So he chose the weapons of choice. He picked out a stick, he picked out a sling, five smooth stones, and a sling, and he went out. Remember, the Philistines are on this side, and the Israelites are on this side. And so David, the, the, the champion is on this side, David was on this side, he descends down into the valley, and he picks out five stones, the champion realizes I have a challenge okay it's time to get into business he took his weapons he took everything he had a armor bearer uh, in front of him who was carrying his shield hey man let, let's go I think there's somebody to fight and so they get down to the valley and when Goliath looks up he says wait a minute where's the champion they're sending me a kid they're sending me Anak. And so the Bible says, Goliath says, and I, you know, Goliath is thinking this way. If I kill this kid, man, people are going to be saying, man, Goliath killed a kid. That's not going to make me look good. Are we, are we together? Yes. And so Goliath, he says, okay, you are coming to fight me. Well, I'm going to show you what's up. I'm, in fact, I'm going to kill you. And in fact, you're going to become fish food. Or bird food. There were no fish. Bird food. And the story goes, my brother and my sister, get this. David hearing this. Re remember this. Saul has already tried to discourage him. Goliath now tries to discourage him. But David was undaunted. Hear me this, my sister. G get this. Remember, white for me, colored for you. You come to me with a sword and a spear and with a javelin. He understood that, yeah, the brother was armed. He was ready to go. But I come to you in the name of? Lord, I'm going to stand over here so you can read. The? Lord, the? Lord, of the armies of Israel whom you have? The Bible continues. This day the? Lord, will deliver you into my hand that all the earth may? Lord, that there is? Lord, in Israel. Then all this assembly shall? That the Lord does not save. I hope you're listening to that. That the Lord does not save with sword and spear. For the battle is. The and he'll give you into my hands. Uh, to make it short. The Bible in this, at this point. It really moves very, very fast. The action picks up. Nobody's talking anymore. The, the Philistine army. The, the champion was, was coming at David. The Bible says David picked up his slung. And the Philistine champion fell. Now normally. You'd expect that when somebody's hit with a, with, a, with a weapon or whatever, most of the times, you, the, the, the expectation is that the person will fall back. Mm -mm -mm. David, Goliath, fell face forward. That's to show you that the power was not actually in David's sling. The power was with God himself. This man had defied the name of God. And so David is telling this man, you, because you have defied the armies of the living God, today you're going to show, God is going to show you what's up. My sister, my brother, David approached the fight from faith and he won. Amen. I'm now preaching to her because she only said amen because she got the point. David approached the fight from Faith and one. Amen. Amen. 
Anybody else? Amen out there? David wasn't looking at the champion. He saw beyond the champion. David looked at the fact that God was the one fighting for him. And so David put himself in a situation where God could use him. Somebody said, when God has big business, faith always gets the contract. Ooh, hey, hey, that's powerful. You see, my brother and my sister, let me preach now. When you look at your problems from faith, fight mode turns on. And so you go to the doctor. The doctor says, you have cancer. Oh, that doesn't bother you. You say, okay, doctor, I understand. What do I need to do? Do I need to change my diet? You may do that, but you get on and you say, Lord, I come to you in faith. I don't know why I have this disease. I don't know why it is ravaging my body, but I believe in your power. And if you want to heal me, heal me. Lord, he said no. He dumped me. He cheated on me. But I believe in your power because you have said it is not good for man to be alone and therefore provide the person who I need. Lord, I didn't make it this semester. The classes, the teachers were just horrible. But I have faith. I'm going to work harder. And next graduation, I'm going to graduate. Lord, hey, hey. The way they ain't going down, but I'm not giving up. Maybe I need to attend a gym. Maybe I need to join JCC Run Club every Sunday morning. Oh, yeah. Lord, people don't attend my study group anymore. But I'm going to keep praying and keep inviting. And people are going to come. And so when we look at our problems from faith, it produces fight mode. We are not ready to give up. We are ready to fight. And so David says, who is this guy? Who has defied my God? The one who gives me strength. So I'm not going to say no. I'm going to fight. And so fighting faith looks to God and does his part. David didn't say, okay, God, you're going to kill Goliath. I'm not going to go down to the valley. You kill him and use me. No, David went down into the valley, picked up stones, put them in a sling, ran towards Goliath and slew the neck or decapitated Goliath. And so fighting faith says, Lord, I will do my human part. Let me break it down because you're not understanding. You would have been saying amen. You see, many of you will say, Pastor, get this, Rainer. But you say, Pastor, please pray for me. I want to do better in school. God is not going to drop the, the book from heaven and say, here it is. Here are all the answers. No, God is not going to do that. That's your part. But as you study, you study hard. Yeah, you got to study hard. As you study hard, when you get on the exam, God will give you the answers you need for the exam. Many of you will say, I need to lose weight. But you never exercise. <laughs> <laughs> no matter how much praying you're going to do, the weight ain't going to go down. It's just as simple as that. God has his part and we have our part to play. I want to be more involved at church. Yeah, I'm getting real now. I want to be more involved at church. But you never ask the pastor what you can do. Hmm? You never put your foot forward. How can you be more involved in church? I want my spiritual life to grow. I want to be more strong in God. But you never read the Bible. I mean, I don't know if that makes sense. doesn't make sense. So my brother and my sister, hear me. Fighting faith looks to God but does its part. I can pray all I want. But if I don't study the Bible, prepare my slides, write a sermon, I have no sermon. No matter how much praying I do. I can even fast the whole day or the whole week. God is not going to download a message in my brain. So my brother and my sister, hear me carefully. Fighting faith looks to God and does his part. Uh, hear this, my, my, my brother and my sister. This is a key point. You see why backpackers can travel to other countries? You know, you know why they can travel to many other countries? Because they have traveled before. They know how it is. They know that if I go to one country, I need to find a place, a cheap place, where I can stay for a night. Maybe I can meet up some more friends and then figure out how I can move around in a cheap way. Because they have that experience. Are we together? David was busy fighting lions, taking care of the sheep, and God was preparing him to fight Goliath. Hey, you didn't know that? You see, some of you tell me, Pastor, I hate my job. When I wake up in the morning, I don't feel like going. 
In fact, I go at 7 a.m. so that I can leave at 3 p.m. I want to be first one in and first one out. I dread my job. I wish I had my dream job. The job you have now is God using that job to pay you for the dream job. We make a mistake thinking that the, the, what we are now, this is not where I, we need to be. I want to be better. I want, I want to take a step up. No, God says be a sheep keeper now so that you can be ready to be a king later. So where you are now, the job you do now, the things you're doing now, God is preparing you, Sister Lara, for the next step. Are we together? So do your best. Do your best. Say, Lord, I don't like it. But I think this is where you have put me to be. Help me to enjoy this. Help me to do my best. Help me to be the best employee in this place. And you're going to see the difference God is going to make in your life. So hear me, my brother, my sister. It is faith is built in the routines of life. God builds your faith when you go to work faithfully every day. God builds your faith when you take care of your children every day. Faith is not built coming to church, singing, uh, our God is enough. That's, that, that's an element of faith. But faith is built in the day-to-day -day experiences. You know how you build faith in the day-to-day -day experiences? When you're getting on the busway, the Halte busway, you pray, Lord, help me to find the right bus. Mm -hmm. That's faith. Lord, this train is so packed, but help me to keep my things safe. Lord, this morning the grab has been driving me crazy. It hasn't been coming like it normally does. I've had to cancel five times. Lord, can you bring a grab? I need a go car. I need a go jack. You're building faith. Lord, my kids don't behave well. I'm trying to, my best. I'm doing my best. But help me. That's how you're building faith. When you bring God into the day-to-day -day experiences of your life. So when you call on the name of God, that's when God allows you to develop your experiences. Fighting faith is built in the daily routines of your life. Pastor, amen. Pastor, how do I build fighting faith? How does that actually happen and translate into my experience? I want you to get this. Once again, white, me, colored, you. Now the men of Israel and Judah did what? And, and the Philistines, the wounded of the Philistines fell along the road. Get this. When they saw that David exercised or he turned on fight mode, they also turned on fight mode. Are we together? So it was the faith of David that inspired the faith of Saul and the army. Are we together? And so my brother and my sister, the way you do it is, you need to look at experiences of other people. There was a woman, she had no money. One kilo of flour and a little bit of oil. A prophet comes by, he says to the woman, make me a cake. It seems like the prophet was being selfish, no, but he insisted, make me a cake. No prophet, I don't have food to feed my sons, they're going to die. No, make me a cake. She made a cake and the Lord provided flour and oil that did not stop. You know what you can do with that story in your life when you look at the bank account? You say, oh man, Whew, it's uh, 1.5 million. I need to pay bills, I need to pay water, electricity. Oh man, I have to, I have to even give uh, money to my brother. And Man, by the end of this, I'm going to be remaining with 50,000. Uh, 50, what to do? Do it. Yeah, do it. Give the money, pay the bills, everything. Give your tithe and, let, and see what God is going to do. Amen. That's faith. There was a young boy. He had five loaves of bread. Second slide. Five loaves of bread and two fishes. Jesus is preaching a sermon to 5,000 people. And it, in fact, it was even more because only the men were counted. But if you add 5,000 and if, if everyone had a wife, that's 10,000. If they had kids, maybe two, you know the number starts to go up. And the disciples come, Sister Julia. They said to this young boy, can we have your lunch? 
And the boy says, oh my goodness. But he gave it. And the story goes, 12 baskets were collected. Lord, how can I use that experience in my life? When I give everything for God, God restores back. When God is asking you to do something in your life, trust him. Let it go. This morning I was teaching the kids. Uh, we were playing a game. If you guys have young kids, we have a Sabbath school class every, every Sabbath from 10.25 to 11.05. You know, you, you, we, we deal with teens and just trying to teach them things about the Bible. But this, this, this day we were, we were uh, playing a game. And the game was trade in, trade out. And so they had to, I gave them two um, objectives. One group had to uh, paint a widow's house. And another group had to sell lemonade on a hot summer day. But the things that they needed, they needed to trade with the other group to find all the materials that were needed in order to reach their, their goal. Are we together? Sometimes, my brother, my sister, God will ask you to trade things out so that you can get things that you need. Are we together? And that takes faith. Sometimes God will tell you, quit the job. Lord, this job pays really well. In fact, I don't have to, to worry about vacation and I can pay all my bills. But God says, no, you quit that job. You know what happens next? God says, I'm giving you this company. It's yours. A lot of times we think the things that God is asking us to do are, are sacrificial. And yes, they are. But at the end of the day, the things that we do for God by faith, we are benefited in the long run. So when we look at our problems, I don't know where the musicians are, but when we look at our problems, it turns on. When we look at our problems from faith, huh? with the eyeglasses of faith, my sister, with the eyeglasses of faith, huh? it turns on fighting mode. And the problems that seem so big and stagger us and cause us difficulties, they go away. How are you fighting? I want you to notice something. As I end this message. It's a summary, Sister Amen. Julia. This is going to be very short, I promise. <laughs> but I come to you in the name of? Of hosts. The? Of the armies of Israel. Whom you have defied. This day, the will deliver you into my hand, and all the earth, and all the earth may know that there is a in Israel, and all this assembly shall know that the does not save with sword or spear. Notice that David's speech is centered on God. God, God, the Lord, 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 the Lord. How are you fighting? Do you turn on fight mode or flight mode? David teaches us today that when we turn on fight mode through faith, our problems become nothing. I don't know what problems you're facing today. What difficulties and challenges are in your life. What I know is sight makes you run away. Faith makes you fight. That's what I know. So you want to say, Pastor, I want God to give me faith to turn on fight mode in my life. I'm tired of running like a chicken or like a dog with a tail between my legs. I want to stand up. Perhaps some of us, we need to stand up to people in our lives. We need to stand up to our bosses. We need to stand up to our family members. Some of us, we are spending more money than we should to impress the haves. Some of us, we think we can be, we can do dating evangelism, convert people to become our faith, you know, because we love them. And when God says, no, I, I didn't call you for that. Let me do the converting. You want to say, Lord, give me faith to turn on fight mode. Anybody? Please rise on your feet as we pray. And I'm going to be praying for the offering. <clears throat> oh.
Let us pray. Dear Jesus, we love you so much. Thank you for the story and the life of David who taught, teaches us today to have faith in you. My brothers and sisters are standing in response to the message. They know that they need more faith to fight like David fought. To start looking at their problems from the eyeglasses of faith. So, Lord, I pray that you would strengthen them in this new desire. I pray that this week, every day, they might pray, Lord, increase my faith. Lord, increase my faith. Give me faith. Give me faith. Give me faith. So, Lord, strengthen them. Father, giving is also an act of faith. And so, Lord, as we dig into our pockets, help us to take what is in there and give to you. And we're going to leave the rest with you. Thank you, God. We love you. We appreciate you. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, my brothers and sisters.